I'm the last and we have some delays, so I will try to do a bit fast. Uh, as we already said, the event has been also organized in, uh, within the DH Hero project. We are leading the work pack VP7 uh, regarding the standards and regulation for uh, robotics uh, technologies. So uh, as Thierry already presented part of the work that we are doing, probably I can skip part of them, but uh, at the end our objective in this uh, VP is collecting a structure and, and establish some information for the companies regarding the standardizations and best practices, also filling the gaps and how can we support the companies on that. And we divided the work in different topics that you already <laughs> presented, so I will skip them. But uh, with the same, we did some activities in the last two years, and I would like to present you some of the results, and then we will do some audience eng engagement. <laughs> so uh, we already did uh, 43 interviews with uh, companies, research centers, and so regarding the best practices and the standards and the gaps they, uh, they found. Uh, it's a bit slow, but oh, okay. uh, they are divided like this uh, by organization type and by country. And for the work that we already uh, have done, uh, we uh, organize a, a database with all the information about the standards, at least with the information we gather, because we discovered that some information is missing still on the data database, but the idea is to maintain it and to update as soon as possible. So thanks for some of the inputs that Jan and Gurbinder gave us today, because I think that is very interesting information to put also on, on this database. For the moment, the information that we have, it's uh, What's happening with the slides? Available on our website. I don't know what's happening, but it's going very <laughs> slow. Uh, I don't know if you can see it, but uh, we have um, under services of the DH Hero uh, website, we have a specific button to reach the database, which is uh, can be sorted by yeah, different topics and countries and so on. But uh, we identified that would be nice to restructure all the information. So any input is also very welcome, but uh, we are working on that during this, this year. Uh, during those two years, we have done different brainstormings, interviews, webinars, uh, surveys, connection between projects like this one, with the high project, uh, just to gather this kind of information, identify the difficulties that uh, industry is facing with uh, the standards, because we know that it's a hard work to be done. And, and as I said, some, not only the, the standards that they are using, but also some best practices or recommendations that could be also reused by others. So, uh, yeah, I think that you already said that we are dividing our topics in three main. It's interoperability, human-machine interaction and software development, but uh, we also saw that there are a lot of relationship between three of them, so sometimes it's difficult to divide, but uh, it's also very interesting to combine. Um, as I said, we are working together with different European projects in, in this VP2. I'm sure that you know most of them. <laughs> like liaison or cover, wearable robotics, and, and also we had this here. And this week also we, we had some networking with tactility project or other projects where technologists also participated. Um, another activity that we had uh, finished la at the end of last year is uh, that we prepare a document with a uh, some best practices and recommendations on software development for robotics technology. Uh, I think that it's a good work. Uh, we expect to have this document available also in our website in the following months. Uh, we are waiting for that, so I cannot share it with you directly, but if someone is interested, we can send it to you by email or wherever. And uh, we built two different uh, tools 
one is related to the ethics and legal acceptances needed for doing clinical trials or early involvement of the humans on our experiments. Um, uh, the idea is that uh, uh, the tool is like a very easy questionnaire to fill in, to fill it in, and at the end of uh, of the questionnaire, you can get an answer telling you which uh, the acceptances you need for carrying out these uh, trials with the humans, because it could be different if it's a medical device or if it's just a questionnaire or whatever. And uh, some information about uh, who is the ethical or legal entity who can accept that trial in each country. Now, right now we have uh, information about Denmark, Germany, Poland, Spain, Switzerland and UK, because those are the, the partners who participated also in the building this tool in DH Hero, but uh, we can add more information as, as we have. On the other side, uh, we have another tool related to the safety. Um, it's based on the same idea as the previous one. I mean, it's a, just a questionnaire with very easy answers to click. It's a multiple choice uh, questionnaire. And uh, it can give you an idea of some, at least some of the standards that should apply for the safety of your robot, the robot that you are developing uh, to, to follow for the certification of, of that system. Um, we can see here, uh, uh, we cannot see it properly, but <laughs> we can see uh, an example. And it's not only for robotic systems as medical device, as uh, we have discussed today in the, in the presentations, some of the robotic system can be considered for industry or wherever, so they are also represented on the question. So the tools can be also found on on the DH Hero website right now, and uh, yeah, we have also under services section, but uh, we have two different volumes: one for the ethics and the other one for the for the safety guide. So they are available for everyone. One question. Sure. Do, you, do you think that we also should add like a security guide or that we should include security in the safety guide? Or probably we should discuss this with, with Raoul Morbert. Uh, yeah, I, I think that is completely different. I mean, uh, the safety guide is right now focused more on like electromagnetic or uh, yeah, the safety for the person who is using. I feel that, if I'm right with English, security is um, broader and more related also to the data and these kind of things. So no. it's, it's good when there are some it's uh, like it, it, you have security, data security, you have mm -hmm. safety, and you have security influencing safety. There is definitely a connection as well. So. Mm -hmm. GDPR is, is security, but there's also a disconnection, so no. I guess it's something to think about, it's not obvious. It's not straight. Yeah, I mean to say ethics is also somehow, I don't know what you said, UK is looking at, so the UK published the standard on ethical design of robots, 8611, and this, this introduces ethical uh, assets, okay, so it's extending uh, so hazard analysis to ethical harm, uh, and then this is uh, also letting maybe some harm or risk assessment. And then ethical harm is a much wider. Yeah, yeah. Uh, this is a bit different, uh, probably because I'm quite fast. Uh, the ethical guide is more is only related to the experiments with the humans. The ethical uh, steps that you need, or the, the ethical approvals that you will need to reach to do the the trials or the experimentation with humans is related to that. But uh, I completely agree with you that uh, the ethical issues related to the design it's really important and it's more and more demanded also because it's not the first time that I'm getting these kind of comments. So probably we can add this. In Sorry. So it's, it's, it's related to safety. The ethical so, guide. So, yeah, 
Yeah, no, course, they... the definition of the safety is about physical. Mm -hmm. so, mm -hmm. so what you're saying is there is also when you're dealing with patients, there's a kind of psychological. Yeah, song. yeah, definitely. So this is like a little bit extension of a safety, to ethical safety. Yeah, okay. yeah, so that's right. Yeah, so the one that uh, is done right now is more related to the physical one, completely agree. And yeah, we will need to, to add this information, I, I agree. And also related to security, that it's, yeah, it's linked, but uh, right now is for us, is different. But uh, yeah, of course. Uh, so yeah, regarding the, the best practices of the standards that the companies are using, we launched this survey uh, one month ago, more or less, uh, we wanted to collect the information about the, yeah, the standards and best practices they are using or they are proposing for robotic technologies. And our idea is to present the, the information on the European Robotics Conference, where we are leading a workshop on, on this topic. So you are invited to attend. <laughs> but, uh, Right now, we didn't get too many answers, so, but I, I will present you what we have right now. So also for audience engagement, there is not many audience, but <laughs> I prepared a, a real-time uh, questionnaire. You can join it uh, using the QR or going to menti.com and using that number. The number will appear in the following slides also. <laughs> And that way we can also discuss about the, the topics that we included on, on the survey. So our first question on this uh, is regarding your, the institution you are working on, the kind of, and uh, yeah. I will open. <laughs> Sorry. Can you go to the barcode again. Ah, uh, you can go to menti.com. To that one, menti.com, and put a number. Because because if I'm going back, probably this will be closed. Back. It's already closed. Yeah, 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 yeah. But uh, it's not inside. <laughs> Are you in? <laughs> okay. So I think that everybody's on. Okay, so most of the people here are attending today are from the healthcare centers. Ah, we are getting more. one small company, I think. Universities, yeah, it's probably is the rehab consortium. Also. And the uh, second one, I will ask you about the country. Uh, last time we, everybody was spent. <laughs> so. Well, this time Germany is winning. So. <laughs> I will go to next. So, well, in the questionnaire that uh, we are, we have it online, and yeah, you can follow it, for, uh, fill it in afterwards if you want. Uh, well, most of the people, uh, we only got eight answers, but uh, right now. Uh, most of them are in medium-sized companies, but also we have some research centers participating. And uh, yeah, and regarding the countries, well, Italy and Spain are <laughs> most famous. <laughs> uh, the question is related to the standards that we are we have detected that could be used on robotic technologies development. 
So here you can find a, a list of uh, of the standards relating more to the quality or yeah, I think that uh, most of them are related to the quality. And we would like if you are using some of them or which are the, sometimes the most known. You can select more more than one. Okay, I it. Is it closed for you? Uh, now it's closed, but I can open it. Again. I can open it again. Doesn't work for you? Yes. Okay. Okay. Probably you are done. No. <laughs> we are getting more. Okay, so you can see that uh, well, the, the 9000, 9001 is usually the the one that is used in most of uh, the centers or the companies, and also the 13, 40, uh, 485 that is related to the medical devices is uh, also very known. But uh, sometimes this happens that uh, we don't know what uh, is supplied in, in the company. On, on the questionnaire, uh, we got similar answers at the end. Uh, this is a 9000 and well, this is the, uh, yeah, the, qual the quality management for, for medical devices too. But uh, some of them don't know what it is or they are applying others. The next, we are now asking about the standards related to software development. Uh, we made a list. I don't know if all of you are developing software, but uh, if you don't, you, have, you can answer. I, I don't develop. <laughs> Okay, as we have some clinical centers, probably you don't <laughs> have a lot of software. Sorry for that. Uh, but uh, well, I don't know if everybody answered, but uh, this one, the 62304, probably is the, the one that is more used in the companies and is well known. We have identified different ones. This is why we added them on the list. Probably something is missing, but uh, also the idea is to provide a sort of list of, uh, of the standards that are, are available right now. On the questionnaire, uh, yeah, as I said, uh, uh, the most known is this one, the 27001. And uh, also you can see that uh, 623004 sorry, uh, is also used by at least two people. Uh, we also uh, wanted to know if there is some um, a task that would be more difficult or takes you more time handling during the, the software development. Because if you can detect that, say we can also provide information or support in in some of the tasks. <laughs> I don't know if everybody voted. Okay, we could see here that uh, oh, a part of there is some people that is not developing software, but uh, uh, usually for the people who is in, uh, developing software, the implementation is, not, is never the, <laughs> the task that takes more time, or not at least they don't have that impression. 
uh, usually the answer are relating more to documentation and also to the validation, which is really, really important for the certification and uh, standards application of, of it. On the questionnaire, it happens something similar. And uh, as I said, uh, the implementation is not something that they are worried about. And uh, for the system interoperability, we would like to know if um, you are connecting different type of softwares, in case that you are doing so, or hardware, or both. You can select more than one. So, uh, as you you have presented uh, at the end, the communication between the, the different systems and devices is usually a problem for the also for the companies with, when they need to connect the software from the others. How to standardize this communication is not really easy. And uh, yeah. so, regarding to that, we also identify several. Uh, standards or recommendation also because some of them are some recommendations and we are looking for the most known and, and the ones that uh, people is using more Okay, in this case, uh, we will see also in uh, in the questionnaire, but what we are identifying is that uh, in the interoperability work, the standards are not so known or it's difficult to apply one standard for, for making in the interactions between softwares and hardwares. And this is something that uh, we can have some room to work also with, uh, with the companies. Uh, yeah, uh, you can see uh, most of the companies are working to put together software and hardware, which would be sometimes really difficult for the communication. And uh, yeah, most of them don't have uh, anything, any standard or best practice or something standardized for doing this communication. So they are trying to take some ideas from here or, or from the other side. And uh, yeah, from my side, this is all. Sorry, <laughs> sorry for for being late today. But uh, yeah, we are working on on those topics. So uh, the information that uh, you have presented today, I think that is really really important for us and, and very relevant for the pro not only for the project but also for the companies that are participating on on the Hero project. So so thanks a lot. If you have any comment or question to me. Thank you. Anna. Are there any questions regarding this uh, last part? Comments? Yeah, I saw cover also in the network because they also made this toolkit. It's, it's not the same, but related to how the I guess you know that already. That's a comment, basically, that is on connections. Yes, we, we also, we, we, we cover so uh, for different activities. Uh, so maybe Michael, you have some. Uh, you can make this conference last year where people from cover participated. And also, this cover also has this financial support to third parties. So it's cascade from the criminal projects. Find out with, with one of these projects, and now in like Fortune, so we teamed up with them and did also some, some events together, showing more joint events. So we are. I, I think one aspect that uh, that also I mean, DIH Hero is also as has covered a project and every project has somehow an end date. 
but uh, there is also a request on the, like a sustainability plan or how it can be sustained or after the end of the project. And that was something that, that we were thinking of uh, probably when we have a good sustainability model that we can also integrate uh, things from cover, but also, for example, from imports then into uh, a longer life of, uh, because I mean, it's a, it's a very good website that Power has, has made and, and very useful for, for the industry, but I'm not so sure about their sustainability model. Um, I expect uh, not that they, that they can do it, and I think that's probably uh, some issue that definitely we identify and we need to also bring further so that on the European level, such uh, outcomes get into sustainability and therefore, again, uh, collaborating and merging or bringing things together is quite important. Yeah, and I think it's very useful with yeah, sustainability is always a challenge. Yeah, specifically, I mean, uh, okay, we have seen it both <laughs> we, we, we think always quite unfortunately it goes so slow when you want to make a standard. On the other hand, we can also say fortunately it goes so slow and it also stays a bit longer. Uh, because of course these this things, they get outdated. I mean, new yeah. norms come in, new uh, procedures uh, come in uh, and so on. So sustainability is not only keeping a website alive, but then you need also to review it and, and to, to keep it updated. Yeah, yeah, because even if it is slow, new things. Yeah, yeah, yeah absolutely. And then from that perspective, things are quite fast outdated. OK, I mean, there is not, uh, not that this brings uh, really major hazards uh, when things uh, get out dated in the end, specifically when it is on, on the medical side, I mean, this is all also audited and, and uh, not only self declaration, and therefore there is always periodically somebody put an eye on it. <laughs> okay, so. With this, let's uh, let's close here the the workshop and uh, thanks to everybody that uh, was here that contributed and uh, also thanks to all the speakers here for the great presentations. I think it was very nice and uh, enriching presentations with some visions to the future and and some. Uh, working methods of standardization.